but it's all a bit weird, right? Because then I saw an interview with one of the main guys involved in this kind of sect click thing, and he says the following. Let me try and get this up on a video, right, so you can check this out. But here's a guy that is speaking about it, right? Hold on. Okay. But when you come in, there's not going to be this judgment of this is what I've done, this is what I'm doing. The first thing we want to do is just connect with that young man. Okay. So we don't. Um, oh, one second. Ah, I went back. By. For us, it's just about attracting these young men to talk. Yeah, there you go. You, we know what you're like now, but we accept you as what you're like in order to make sure that we can show you there's an alternative. So if that if that valley if that valley attracts them, then we're gonna wear valleys all day. You know? Do you think that uh, so they're they're basically saying their way of like, you know, uh, what's I would call them the way of ministering to the youth is to appeal to the things that they you know, it's kinda like you wanna meet someone where they're at, right? Meeting someone where they're at and standing on a stage with a banaclava on in church, rapping drill type lyrics. They're two different things, right? The whole theory about the whole idea about meeting someone where they're at is about um, if you see a homeless person on the street, don't stand up and speak to them like you're their overlord, you know? Like kind of sit down next to them and kind of speak to them. And you're on the same level, right? Like they can sit on the floor, you can sit on the floor. Um, but you don't necessarily go up to them and wear your most dirtiest clothes in order to kind of like um, emote or to kind of relate to them. You don't turn up there with like your day off work clothes or a bad t-shirt and stuff hey hey man i know you're homeless and stuff and i have a full-time job but i thought i would just you know wear my shitty garments and maybe i could let you know that you know we're the same type of person you don't do that sort of stuff so it's all a bit weird like why would you want to have a banner clover on on church stage in order to attract youth if anything that's not gonna attract me i want to I want my, again, I don't go to church anymore. I haven't gone to church in years, but I, if I do go to a church, I want the church to be anything but a representation of what I'm seeing on the roads, right? I want it to be a complete, a complete opposite of what I'm seeing on the roads. I want it to be a, a sanctuary, somewhere where I can go and uh, seek solace, right? And communionship and fellowship with my fellow people who kind of look like me, right? And saying, and talking about people that look like you, right? Talking about that, talking about that, talking about people that look like you, Look at the trailer that they used to promote the church, right? And then tell me if you think this is a church or is this a sect, man? Put this full screen. Hope you can hear this on the audio too. Three very attractive young black women walking towards some sort of high rise building. Everyone's got immaculate hair, immaculate dresses, very shapely, nice heels and amazing watches. Oh, and uh, a, a a nice shot as they walk into the building, right? It's concentrating on their high heels. And they've all got what? Red bottoms, bruv. Louboutins, right? They're not mucking around here, right? This is a church where everyone that walks in there looks immaculate, right? They all look like they're going to the BET Awards. You know what I mean? Essence Fest. Do you know what I mean? Like the most, the blackest of the blackest that you can get out there. You know, black excellence, man. This is what it is. You see that Sean Diddy Combs cover or as he's known now, Love GQ cover? That's what he was talking about. Is he talking about that? And it's called SPAC Nation. I don't know what is why it's called that. I haven't looked into it because I think firing off the hip is way more fun than getting the facts. What the fuck is SPAC Nation? What kind of weird name is that? SPAC Nation. Hmm. Jesus. Tolu Balogan, bruv. <laughs> Holy shit. Look at the... It's just I love this opulence. It's like, what in the world is this? I guess it goes to show... <coughs> oh, shit. I guess it goes to show, right, that they are kind of mean people where they're at because this is what people want. They want to see this. They want this, like... You know, she's wearing a, a faux fur... 
It might even be, might even be fur. I, I might be I might be disparaging of her thing. You know what I mean? Like it might be fur, right? She's wearing this fur coat. She's in, she's in the lobby of this amazing sky rise building with a man standing at the door. You know, someone presses your button to for you to go up. Her name is Tolu Belogan, and she's balling. Maybe people need this, right? People want this. That's what they probably want. So they're just appealing to the lowest common denominator. It's like the kind of, you know, the dangling that carrot in front of you. Like, hey, you want this roly? Come into my church. Give me your tithe. Do they even pay tithe at Sprack Nation? Is it, is it a church? Do they read the Bible? I don't know, man. Let's carry on and hear what Tolu Belogan has to say. Ho-ho! <laughs> She's got a property managing company, mate. Four million as well. Shit. It's like in the first 30, in the first 40 seconds, right? You know exactly what this church is about, man. Exactly. Those three girls walking in with their immaculate outfits and that, looking 10 out of 10, Louboutins as they walk through the door. They've got, you know, three girls, friendship, uh, camaraderie. They've got another girl who is another baller waiting for them in the lobby of this hotel or... It might be even the, where the church is based. Boop, ba, ba, kitty, da. But you know what it reminds me of, right? This is like a black version of Hillsong. You know the guy that does Hillsong? The, 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 I don't know, I forgot his name. The guy that um, is now Justin Bieber's best friend who kind of made Justin Bieber stop his tour um, out of nowhere and kind of commit himself to Christ and shit. This kind of reminds me of that, right? It's like same sort of realm, right? Because that guy, he's kind of ripped young he's lean he wears like ripped he wears like jerry lorenzo fear of god clothes he wears saint laurent boots a little trucker hat he's got tattoos and stuff but he praises the lord you know that sun stuff it kind of reminds me of this sort of vibe uh-huh so i'm getting the drift of what they're going about so if you think this is sort of like a pyramid scheme, but in a church, right? So they kind of attract you with all these kind of top tier ladies in the group, right? Who all individually have their own businesses they run. Usually maybe might be run within the church, might be might be through proxy, right? Because they're all based in this, they're all kind of successful people that are all in this same sort of room. So you kind of, you know, bounce off each other and kind of get new ideas and you expand your, um, what do you call it? You expand your wealth, your circle of wealth, right? And... It also might be a good way to attract people in. Because if I see Tolu Belogan coming in with her fucking amazing eyebrows, all done, hair, looking immaculate, her little fur gelée on, I might want to go to that church too, actually. She's got her manicures done, not one fingernails chipped. I want to go. But also, if you hear what they say, it's, it's, um, they take people out of poverty, which means that you come in and they sort of maybe induct you in some sort of management consultancy company thingy majiggy whatever it may be or they expose you to their circle of contacts uh, there's various things that they can do to kind of get you in the funnel right this is kind of top of the funnel shit isn't it huh clever 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 marketing let's carry on it's your drama i was just say well, i'll keep going forward one second oh my god this is so good Okay, full screen again. Look at the look at the shots though. Her watch, her bag, the nails. Look at the shots. They know what they're doing, man. Oh, this is so horrible. This is meant to be a church. What the fuck is this, right? Holy shit. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Intimates? What's an intimate? Someone know what an intimate is? Is that a thing? What's an intimate? Intimate? Should I let me just let me let me YouTube let me Google this on my phone. But an intimate? Have you heard of an intimate before? Intimates. What's an intimate? Huh? Intimates. What the fuck is that? Ah, oh, intimates. Where? I didn't know that was a thing. An intimate, intimates. Cause I've seen a link for some urban outfit. Uh, intimates wear for women. Okay, fair enough, woman. I was gonna, I was gonna chat shit and bust some balls, but it's actually a thing. Oh, intimates is uh, is underclothing, right? So like um, boob tubes and whatever it may be. 
and this sort of stuff, right? That's this. This is an intimate. These sort of like Calvin Klein sets, like that. If you can see my cracked screen, right? That's an intimate. Okay, I didn't know that. Fair enough. Let's carry on. Taiwan, huh? Woo! Yo, Evelyn's a smoke show now. Like, if you're watching some video, Evelyn's... Woo! Woo-hoo-hoo! Evelyn, I'm coming to whatever church you're in, baby girl. I'm coming. <laughs> Obviously, in emerging markets. Go on with your perfect teeth on your face. Yo, this is this is hand down the best marketing campaign I've ever seen for a church in my life, man. I'm gonna take the piss out of this shit f until until the the, the the fucking world ends. But this is the best marketing campaign I've seen in my life. I wanna go. I wanna go. But I don't have a suit. I wanna go. Give. I wanna give you my money, man. Just like I stand next to Evelyn. <laughs> oh, now the lads are out. Shit. No, we gotta rewind that, man. You see how the lads came out of the lift? You see how they came out of the lift? Now, should, should that many men should be in one lift anyway, in general? Should they? If we're not in a burger, I don't want to see that many men in the lift. But let me let them live. Look at that! All the boys and that. Oh! <laughs> Bruv! This guy's name's Armstrong Martins. <laughs> you got two second names. As Chris Aliza would say. Choose one! Two first names. Two surnames, bro. Wagwan, choose one. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Yo, black people love them coats, innit? Right, yeah? No? Or is it only me? We love them coats with them fur collars. Asian boys and black boys love them fucking coats, innit? Them fucking diddy coats, innit? That's what, that's what I imagine you're doing with those kind of coats, innit? You've got fur, mink, mink, mink fur and that. Mink fur collar. You know what I mean? Just dancing in the club like... Oh, God almighty. Go on, I'm, I'm sure, Martin. Tell us. He's in the recording, I supposedly. You couldn't tell, right? Huh? Uh, hi, my name is Armstrong Martins. I'm a recording artist. I'm an entrepreneur. I combine those two passions. I'm in the business of being rich. Oh, recording artist and entrepreneur. Really, though? Really? Oh, they were praying. Shit. Wow, man. This is the best marketing campaign I've ever seen for a church in my life, man. This is fucking strategic marketing, as Joe Budden podcast would say, man. God almighty, this is amazing. Everyone that spoke so far has had a shot of their watch. Every single person. No, is it just me? Every person has shot their watch. Watch, 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 watch. I, I have this free little bracelet that a friend at work gave me when she went on holiday to Mexico. <laughs> That's what I have. I don't have anything. I'm naked, bruh. I've got to get... So when I go to this place, I've got to get a suit. I've got to get a haircut. I've got to trim my eyebrows. Um, I've got to get a watch. Um, so probably some Tom Ford and some shoes. I gotta get a whole wardrobe, man. I don't have any of this shit. I have one suit that I wore for a wedding, and I've already worn it four times. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, oh, oh, God. Yo, he's got that voice on lock, innit? Yeah, he's got he's got that young community leader voice on lock, innit? Right? 
When he calls you and he tells you over the phone why ain't you been church, you're gonna turn up in it next day, aren't you? He's got that voice on lock, no? <laughs> Oh, I never watch shot again. Hublot and a calculator shot. Yo, these guys, man. They want they want me, they want me to get I wanna get all iced out, man. I want I wanna get iced out. I want that drip, man. Shit, I ain't got nothing, man. Look what I got, nothing. I got a crack screen, I got a bloody afro comb here that I don't even use. Cause my hair's you know where it is. <laughs> Hey, he's breaking the barriers that not a lot of black men normally break, bruv. This guy is like a—he's a revolutionarist, no? He's in the same mold as like a Martin Luther King, no? Malcolm X out here, bruv, in a blue suit as well. Woo! Look at these guys, man. Look at this shot. This is... <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh. This is so base. It's like... A, it's, 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 it's cringy, right? Annoying, frustrating, but it also is right on the money. They know exactly who they're speaking to. And someone, whoever they're speaking to... We'll listen. We'll, we'll look at this video and we'll automatically want to go. It's got me amped up, right? I'm like, oh my god, I need to buy a watch, man. I need to start going to Moss Bros or whatever it may be, wherever these guys are getting their suits from, and just get glued up and get some Louboutins and that. You know what I mean? Or just paint the bottom with some Primark shoes. I don't know. I do sign. So imagine little old me, right? Who hasn't got a haircut in six months is thinking like this. Imagine what Jerome, who 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 grew up with these guys in the in, in those bad blocks. Sees and it's like, oh my god, man! I recognize that boy. He used to play football with him in a cage. Now look at him, man! Now he's doing crossover services and. But you know what, right? This this guy here, he needs to change his shirt color. He looks naked, no? Never. If you're a white guy, never never wear a peach, pink, or off white. No, not off white. Never wear a peach. He's kind of yeah. He's he's too pasty for that. If you're white, don't wear a peach shirt underneath a blue suit. You look naked. It looks like he's got nothing on underneath. It's all like black people. You can't wear brown, can you? Really. Um, from far, you always look like you ain't got nothing on. Um, unless you're dark like me and no one can tell. But anyway, let's play this. Oh, Jesus Christ. The boys are back in town. <sighs> oh, finally they got someone who's actually working a job right the rest of them i don't know what they're actually doing i don't know we don't know, we don't know. but this guy works for an investment firm in mayfair now they're appealing to that guy who's like you know what i don't want to i don't want to have like a property management company i don't want to sell intimates in taiwan i want to have a job in central london where i've got like a nice power suit on i've got a company card you know that kind of shit and here's your dude he's speaking to you gold watches everywhere No mics though, I'm not liking. The audio is a bit fucked up, innit? No one's got any mics, but the suits and the phase on these guys. <laughs> A1, brother. Shove them walking away. Oh. <laughs> Where are you going, bro? Why are you dressed up like that? Where are you going? <laughs> oh. Oh. I'm not a dressing for an occasion type of person, but come on, man. Like, where are you going dressing up in a three piece suit? Where are you going? Hmm? Where are you going? Where are you going? Wait, you trying to impress? Come on. Huh? <laughs> Listen, 
you need to go back to school. This is, this is what you need to go and do. This is how to set up a business. These are the things in which I've learned in house. I came at the age of 19. I'm now 22 and in the space of three years, I've managed to achieve so much. And it's all been because of the guidance that I received. Do you think they drink in this church? Right? All these ballers in this church with their gold watches and their suits on and stuff. Do you think they let them drink? Can they have sex? Because, I don't know, man. As a guy, yeah? As a guy, guy, if I'm doing all this, right? I ain't doing all this to hang on a bunch of boys. I want to attract the girls, man. I want to attract Evelyn, Evelyn. Do you think they let them have sex? Do you think so? Or no? Maybe it's one of those kind of churches where you'd have to get tattoos, you can wear a banner and do like Christian drill, and you could also fuck girls. That'd be mad. That is mad. The reason why I believe that you should come to the New Year's Eve crossover is because you're going to meet some extraordinary people doing extraordinary things. It's not every day that. And they call it a crossover too, right? You're crossing over into a new world, man. You're crossing over into your destiny. You're going from where you were to where you could be. <laughs> Clever. And you get to see a 22 year old or a 25 year old doing such magnificent things. Hi, my name is Arthur and I'm a member of Spat Nation. I'm also a Bitcoin trader. How I came about doing this? Bitcoin trader. Haha. <laughs> I wonder where you are in that now, brother. It's not at 20,000. Per Bitcoin now anymore, man. It's like about nine, isn't it? Is it nine now? Bitcoin trader. My fucking ass, man. My ass. We're all hurting out here, man. Don't tell me that. We're all hurting collectively out here. It's 8,600 now per one Bitcoin. Trader. <laughs> <laughs> bruv man churches are a madness isn't it no churches are an absolute madness bruv you're meant to go there for like spiritual healing, right? As a, a respite, as some sort of place where you can go to kind of unplug and escape from the struggles or the scourges or the demands of the outside world. And now they're like blending into each other. There is no separation. They're the same thing, right? All of this um, over glorification of materialism, this idea that because you're living, because you're the, one of the youngest of five children living in a single parent household that you immediately want to see, you immediately want to see yourself in these guys, you want the watch, you want the suit, you want the girls, you want the car, you want the chauffeur. Like, that isn't what being spiritual or having a faith or believing in something is really about. Should, shouldn't it not be? A, that's not really what it should be about, should it? When you read the scriptures or you read any sort of religious based text, you're reading it because not because of your you're not taking literal examples from it, but you're learning the lessons, the kind of the metaphors used or the stories that kind of maybe kind of relate to where you are in terms of maybe picking yourself up again from a bad situation or giving to charity or reconnecting with friends or surrounding yourself with people that you love or trying to find a life partner or make having a family going after your dreams but materialism maybachs bentleys hublots rolexes louboutins um savile row suits is that what religion has come to now and then you've got you've got music that is directly influenced by um a particular type of music that is specifically based on gang culture right drill music is specifically a gang culture based music it's not bad it's good i listen to a lot of the music on there but you can't separate the connotation of a banaclava and drill they're synonymous they're attached to the bone they're attached to the hip sorry like they are one 
Now you're taking symbolism of a balaclava and saying somehow it's as do with being a warrior. Like that's what the guy said before on the panel. You put a ban oh balaclava's were people don't understand a balaclava's were used as a sign of being a warrior going into war. What war are you going into by singing a gospel themed drill music song on a stage somewhere? Yo, all these guys don't look their age, you know? 23. Guys balding. Um, facial hair, you know, grows when it wants to. Doesn't look twenty doesn't look twenty three to me. Looks really old to me, doesn't it? No? Or maybe if you just <laughs> crop out his hair and look at his face, it might look young, but everyone looks really old. Maybe that's a new thing too. Remember when I was younger, you wanted to look as young as you could. You didn't want to look older. You wanted to look young. Now kids nowadays want to look really old. Yeah, everyone everyone that was speaking there is under the age of twenty five, it, it seemed like, apart from the guy that maybe Said he started it. Huh. Interesting. Gas and heat and engineering company called Zion Heating. The reason why I'm telling you to come to this year's crossover summit is because that was my first encounter with Spat Nation. And that was two years ago. And within two years, I've now fully qualified myself as a gas and heating engineer. And now I've started my own business and employing other people. If you now want to find out how I've done this, please come on the break. My name is Nathan. I'm a pastor at Spat Nation. <laughs> hey Nathan, we can't hear you, bro. Speak up, man. <laughs> but I'm not gonna lie, Nathan's the best dressed guy in the whole group. No, huh? we're not gonna lie. That he's the best dressed guy in the whole group. He's suit, no socks with the loafers on. He's got the, you know, he's got the little six buttons undone. You know, down to his navel and that. Do your thing, Nathan. Cryptocurrency hedge fund. Hmm. So still involved in fashion, which I run an online fashion company. Why would I say that you need to be No one day looks the best. He's got an online fashion store. Makes sense, man. Nathan, you're a bad boy. Do your thing. This New Year's Eve. In Spat Nation, this New Year's Eve, there's gonna be two thousand young people. Two thousand young people who are tired of mediocrity. Two thousand young people are Que, que, que cosa? Mediocrity or mediocrity, my brother. Let's go back again. What do you say? 2,000 young people who are tired of mediocrity. Mediocrity. people are currently breaking barriers in the industries. Barriers. 2,000 young people that love God with everything they are. Where else would you be? Make sure I see you that I see you. Jesus Christ, brother. Yeah, man. Um, What can you say? Uh, wow, wow, wow. If that's church nowadays, then I definitely do not want to go, man. That's quite sad to see, man, to be honest. If I'm 